Eric, a notorious kidnapper who kidnapped eight people and received $100 million from each victim's family. Typically he targets wealthy individuals who reside in Lagos City's affluent neighborhoods. He had managed to avoid being photographed for decades, which allowed him to maintain his anonymity. Even his gang members are unaware of his real name, which enabled him to avoid arrest all this while. He however was mistakenly taken hostage by amateurs, who were forced to release him once it was established that he was the infamous kingpin they idolized. Being able to plan, strategize, and know things like his victims' eating habits, the names of their children, and who they are having an extramarital affair with sets him apart from his contemporaries. He had mastered this craft so well, he finds it easy to separate his life of crime from the devoted and loving father, and husband he portrays to his two families, which he also had successfully kept a secret from his wife and mistress, as long as he could support them both. He prides himself as a real man and considers any man who couldn't provide for his family as an effeminate man, life was good and he was living it. After the release of his last victim, his accountant who does his finances, and also is in on it, provides him a new target he had spotted in the bank, and Eric didn't waste time in getting to work. The target, a woman who had just inherited the biggest transport business in the country left by her late father. Being a master of disguise, he tails her, and to keep a closer eye on her, he pays for one of his gang members to pose as an apprentice close to the target's office. In the meantime, the police department's intelligence response team, which consists of ACP Buka, his team, Amina, and Charles, a young enthusiastic recruit who idolizes him, finally makes progress in the investigation when they notice a change in the number of people he calls with one SIM. Since he uses several SIM cards to call the families of his victims, he rarely calls two numbers with the same SIM. But on this particular occasion they discovered he did call another number, a hotel in South Africa. Buka quickly takes this information to his superiors, but he is rebuffed since the police department is poorly funded, and there was no money to pursue his investigations. His past history in the force might have been an attribute for the refusal, but the superior assures him it wasn't and promised to move a few things around. Next, he and his team flew from Abuja to Lagos to speak with the victim's families. They all denied being a victim of kidnap, and being wealthy people, they just wanted it to be bygones. But one of the victim unbeknownst to his mother, meets Buka with his uncle outside the police station, and reveals all he knows. In the meantime, Eric gives his foot soldiers their shares from the last job, but Sunday, the operational driver bemoans the amount given to him as he claims to have debts and family problems, prompting Eric to give him an extra $2,000 added to the earlier $10,000 given, but on loan, which he will collect from the next job. On the day of the operation, everything goes smoothly until they come across a policeman. However Eric had thought the plans to be precise, and a policeman is inconsequential to interfere with it, so they gun him down and proceeded with the kidnap. They encountered another problem, the police whilst in transit, Knowing the policemen are susceptible to bribery and wouldn't search them, they quickly bribe their way through. The next phase of his plan is the storage, and he has a different team for that. The hostage whose name is Doris is then taken to their hideout, he takes photos of her then offers her water while apologizing in a rather sadistic manner. He then asks for her husband's contact so he could start making demands, but she refuses, and since he had done his homework on her, he threatens her with his findings, and she gives in. The part where he could toy with his victims might be the most enjoyable part for him. And when he calls her husband to make his demand of $100 million, it gives him joy when he denied having such amount of money, and to prove how maniacal he is. He tells a joke that only amuses him, not minding the engraved man he had taken a wife and a mother to his child from. The situation with the woman he just kidnapped had an awakening effect on him. So he buys his mistress a car and his wife, a house in Ghana, probably to appreciate them now he has them. Meanwhile Doris's well-being is catered by the two other gang members in the house. One named Meshach is in charge of retrieving money from the ATM and providing food for her, However, he occasionally touches her inappropriately and hits her. As a result, the other named Spark took command. He tries to appear tough, but he is more sympathetic towards her, which she intends to exploit after listening in on his phone call. He appears to want to leave the country soon, and the preparations are costing him money. She tries to get in his head, when she offered he requests 5 million naira from her husband, although tempted, he refused her offer. Her husband, although not able to get the total funds was able to get $350,000, which he was directed on where to leave it, while he sourced for the remaining $99,650,000. The police, on the other hand, were able to triangulate where the call came from, and they resumed their search, questioning residents. It appears they are very close, yet distant as they missed Meshach during one of his runs, and Eric as well, who was watching his daughter sing in the choir inside the church they parked in front of. And after staying two weeks in the area, they almost gave up, before their intelligence guy informed them of yet another lead. According to the hotel in South Africa that got in touch with them, there was a Nigerian guest there at the time who was from the exact village that the victim claims Eric is from. The hotel and police in South Africa aren't helpful though, all they provided was a completed form with the UK address where the cardholder's credit card is registered. They then spoke with Scotland Yard, but that conversation ended in a dead end. Charles becomes enraged because he believes their findings are more than just coincidence, and they should travel to London. Buka rejects this and sends Charles outside because he was difficult to control. Outside, 
Amina calms him and explains that Buka was only being cautious to avoid making another error that would obviously end his career. Charles, however, is already aware of Buka's error that nearly cost him his entire team in a shootout and believes he is making an even bigger mistake by choosing not to travel to London. Eric's sister, who only sees his family in the hotel, chastises him for not visiting their dying father in the past 19 years and for calling him an effeminate man after offering money to help him. However, money isn't everything, and Eric's money could only be used to buy nice things for his children, like cars, houses, and phones, but it couldn't help them preserve their memories because he had forewarned the family not to take photos of him. And when they do, he hits them. He leaves his family behind in favor of the other family he has with his mistress out of annoyance. Meanwhile, Spark finally gives in to call Doris's husband. After a few days, Eric, who had overcome his rage, comes home. He pardons his son and, as father of the year, gives him his first drink. At the hideout, Spark frees Doris after receiving payment from her husband. He points out an escape route and makes a promise to shoot her if she is apprehended. She immediately leaves, but as she tiptoes past Meshach who is dozing off outside, the end of her gown gets caught on his toes. She manages to free it, and headed to the fence, she scales over it, and injures herself in the process. However, Meshach had been awakened by her scream and had started searching for her. She had managed to hide, and he nearly found her, but she was ultimately saved by the security personnel watching the building she had fallen into. Spark shoots him dead right away, and they flee back into the house, guns drawn, accusing each other of releasing their hostage. Their superior de-escalates the situation and informs Eric, who orders them to destroy all evidence and vacate immediately, as well as to kill the second hostage. Doris, who had spent the night in her hiding place, is awoken the next morning by noises from neighbors who had seen the dead guard. Police swam the area quickly, but it appears Eric has a cop on his payroll who will destroy any evidence found. Then, in the hospital, Doris is reunited with her family. Buka and Charles attempt to see the evidence from the crime scene while they are at the police station, but the compromised policeman turns them away. The police department released a statement regarding the kidnapping and announced a 35 million naira reward for anyone with information. Eric is concerned about this because he is aware of a number of people who are willing to turn him in. In the meantime, Buka and Charles headed to the crime scene, and after hours had passed they found nothing, but Buka was still committed and managed to find an ATM receipt from the trash can. And with that the CIU were able to retrieve Meshach's information which led to his arrest, they also used his call log to track down other gang members. What transpired next is a series of arrests, but they failed to get Spark who was about leaving the country. Sunday on the other hand avails himself to the police in hopes to receive leniency and the cash reward for snitching. Eric, who has learned that his gangs are being held by the police and that he has a snitch, springs into action as he gets ready to send his family to Ghana. His wife protests, unaware of the situation, but he is very persuasive. He arranges for his family to be flown out while he goes back to sell his properties and automobiles, promising to join them later. The police, even after having his gangs in custody couldn't move forward since he never used his real name and there weren't any photos to link him, but they know he couldn't have been 100% careful. So they went over the call logs from the 126 SIM cards they retrieved as evidence. This time they were able to get the contact of his mistress, after bringing her in, they threatened her to give up Eric or they would charge her as an accomplice to his crimes, she couldn't make sense of the situation but not wanting to spend years in jail, she agrees to help with their investigations. Now they have Eric back to a corner, more agents are then flown in from Abuja for what they call Operation Chairman, they mounted surveillance on his close associates, even his mistress in case he reaches out to them. Even so, that night Eric was able to get to Sunday at a pub when he left to urinate. Eric who now goes by the name Nelson Mensa, calls a private pilot to make preparations for his departure for Ghana the next day, after settling on a price. He then meets his sister and gives her $200,000 and informs her he is leaving, she couldn't understand what he is saying, and neither can she stop him. Sunday's death infuriates Buka, who couldn't understand the inadequacy of his agents, that could have been their only chance to capture Eric, but they let him slip. Nonetheless, luck was still on their side, because Eric reached out to his mistress also to inform her of his departure, the agent stationed in the house quickly sprang into action. They let her go out on his direction since Charles was also stationed outside and could see her. Eric signals for her, and she joins him, he begins driving, and Charles tails him. In the car, Eric could sense her unease. Her constant questions about the reason for the drive irritate him even more, so he tells her he is leaving but won't say where. In any case, she notices the Ghana passport but acts as though she didn't. She continues with her pointless attempts at conversations, which makes him understand the police has gotten to her also. He chokes her and when she confirms his suspicions, he pushes her out of the car and sped away. Charles who had seen this, radios his team to pick the mistress while he still tailed Eric. Eric then calls the pilot again, to fast track his travel arrangements by one hour, and even quintuples his pay. While still on call, he gets distracted, and gets into an accident with an incoming vehicle causing his car to flip. Charles ignoring his teammate's order to stay put, approaches Eric like a concerned citizen but ends up being killed by him. Eric who has a dislocated left shoulder takes Charles's car and leaves. 
That morning, Amina and her teammates see the liveless body of Charles before Buka arrives, and since Charles's phone is still in the car Eric drove, they were able to track it to a parking area in close proximity to Eric's house. Eric now cleaned up, and still packing his bags, sees the police drive in, puts his last belongings together, and flees through a well-concealed gap in the fence. Even though they missed him again, Amina informs Buka of the Ghana passport the mistress had seen in the car, which led them to the airport. They asked to see all the males with a Ghana passport, but the only male was a child. Buka realized he had been going about it wrong, if he was Eric he would take a private flight instead. Meanwhile Eric is seating pretty in the private plane, and is being treated to a glass of champagne, he exhales, and finally relaxes after almost escaping capture, he calls his wife and asks her to give his daughter the phone, he informs her he will join them in one hour. However the plane is stopped on its tracks, he looks through the window and sees the IRS again and his excitement quickly turns to fear, he begs the air waitress not to open the door, she simply tells him to remain seated. The IRS burst in and arrest him, his mistress gives a nod which confirms his identity and with that they know they've got the right guy. He is then put in their van, and the movie ends as he glares at Buka, however Buka gives him a satisfactory look. And if you like the video, like it and subscribe to the channel. Bye for now.